This is a 2007 Honda Accord. And this one isn't any Accord. This is my Accord, Betty White. Let's get up close and personal and see everything the Accord had to offer back in 2007, plus a little bit more of the things that I added to it. So the first thing that you'll notice on the outside before we get inside is the front end. So this is the seventh generation of the Accord and this particular one is a 2007 and this is considered the 7.5 gen Accord. So it's either 2006 or 2007. So those are the last two model years of the Accord. The first thing that you'll notice is the grill. It's kind of different. I added a little JDM flare to it just with a chrome lip which I painted black from the Inspire, which goes on the hood, and then I just blacked out my original grill. And you'll also see these new headlight housings, so I got them off of eBay for 120 bucks, so I'm pretty surprised on how good they are. The next thing that you'll notice is that I put in LED fog lights in my car, and just, I put in fog lights in the car, period. Because these Accords, you could only get fog lights as a dealer accessory. So no Accord from 2003 to 2007, any 7th gen Accord, came with factory fog lights. And you know, while I was at it, I got hooked up by Sea Light LED, and they helped me out and sent me these fog light bulbs. They're five or 6,000 K. They're really bright, and they really make a big difference compared to my halogens that I had before. So on the side of my Accord, the other thing I really like is the silhouette of the car. I mean, obviously it looks like any kind of bland looking mid-sized family sedan from the mid-2000s, but I don't know. There's something about this car that I really liked, and that's why I got it. I liked it over the Camry and the Passat and all those other mid-sized family sedans that had V6s. Because I really wanted the V6 because I just, I know it's my first car, but I really did care about the power and I I don't regret it even though even though gas isn't that cheap but the biggest difference from my Accord and other Accords is that I put in these 19 inch alloys from the new Accord Sport and they're wrapped around 23540 R19 tires and they are the factory Goodyear tires I know I've heard people on Facebook pages and Accord forums with the 10th gens that have these tires. I've heard that they've had problems with them, of the tread coming off from the sidewall. I don't know about that. I think that's a little sketchy, but I haven't had any trouble with them. And compared to my stock 215s on my 17 inch wheels, the ride isn't that much different. You can definitely tell it's a lot stiffer. Not a lot stiffer, but it doesn't absorb the bumps as much, but it does handle a lot much better and it takes it takes corners a lot more a lot you can take corners a lot faster with these than the old ones and it's just a more high performance all season tire but I did keep my stock wheels for snow tires for this winter time but I'll see how these do and then I'll really figure out what I want to do another thing that you'll notice is that I put on these eBay kind of cheap but still good rain guards for my windows because my AC compressor doesn't work all the time so when it rains it kind of sucks before because I had to keep my windows closed and I'd have to play with my sunroof because when it rains I'd have to like close it before I stop because water would rush into the inside of the car and get me all wet so these are definitely a lifesaver and they actually do work I heard that they're supposed to reduce wind noise, but ironically they made more, but it doesn't really bother me that much because the car is so loud already. But they were 30 bucks and I'm not complaining. You can also follow me on Instagram if you want to. I 
I did that because, you know, why not? There's nothing to lose on that, huh? So finally, on the rear of the Accord, you have factory LED taillights from 2007. That was one thing that I kind of liked. I really liked the 7 and a half gen Accords just for the restyled front and rear end. It just looks a lot better. But you do have LED brake lights and tail lights, and they're each individual little bulbs. So some of them might go out after, some, after time, but I haven't had any problems with mine. But normally the housing is completely red, but I got the Inspire ones, also the Hybrid Accord ones. The ones for the Hybrid Accord were a lot cheaper, so I got these. They look identical. It's just a little LED light on the bottom of the light is missing on the Inspire ones, and it's not on the Hybrid ones, so why not? But I did get the clear lenses for the turn signals, which I like a lot more. And I am running last with LED rear turn signals, which are really bright at night and during the day. You have no trouble seeing them anytime. Shout out to you guys too for sending me these lights too. I also have LED reverse lights in the back too, because the reverse lights are right here if you're wondering. I don't know why they did that. I would like put it here if it was my choice to do that but I'm still happy with them there it doesn't look too bad and the LEDs are pretty bright too another thing that you'll notice is that I put on this factory rear spoiler I did a video on that I know that for sure uh, so I had to paint it and came with primer but I put primer on it so I primed it painted it did everything mounted it and it's been on for about almost a year maybe a little bit less a little bit more and I've had no problems with it it does it is starting to crack underneath just if you like put pressure on it but I normally never put pressure on it it's only like other people one thing is that it weighs down the deck lid when the trunk is open so if you're not used to it it'll just shut on its own but um it doesn't really bother me but I do think I'm gonna get the trunk springs that came for the Accords with the rear spoilers. Another thing that you'll notice that I did is that I painted the rear lower trim and all V6 Accords from the seventh gen have dual exhaust, so that's a nice touch. I really like the dual exhaust look apart from each other. It's just really clean and, lo and it looks muscular. The whole rear end of the car looks pretty muscular in my opinion. And speaking about those dual exhausts, let's take a listen to how it sounds because I personally haven't heard my car from the outside before so I'm definitely going to be re-watching this video while I'm editing it and afterwards just to listen to how this sounds because I think it sounds pretty good. So what I did to it is I have an aftermarket resonator from eBay, it was 40 bucks, and then I have two glass packs as the mufflers and an electronic cutout which I can control from inside my car and I hardwired it. Um, it's a pretty simple job, you just have to know how to weld and cut piping, but I had a guy do that for me. Uh, shout out to Carlos at Auto Mufflers in College Park. Uh, he helped me out with that and also perfect auto and body It's either perfect or perfect. I don't know how they pronounce it, but whatever they're in Beltsville as well So they did some stuff and he did some stuff too at first it was straight pipe, but that was just way too loud I also did put an inspire badge on the rear end of it just because the inspire is the Japanese version of this particular car and I just think it's a lot cooler of a car and it's just kind of cool to say I have a Honda Inspire because not too many people know what that is. Before we get inside, I almost forgot to show you guys that I actually painted my roof black. I didn't do a video on it, but I think it turned out pretty good. I used spray paint and painter's tape and uh, turned out pretty good. I still have to touch up on some places because I rushed a little bit for the clear coat so it doesn't really look that good. So I'm just going to repaint it and redo the clear coat, obviously, and then wait on the clear coat. I think I'll do a video on that if you guys want me to, but um, yeah, I guess it's time to get inside. My key fob is 
very different than other Accord key fobs from the seventh generation because I put in a push to start kit and a smart key system in my car just because I wanted it and I thought it was cool. I like technology in cars, so I did it. It pretty much uses an OEM looking Honda remote, just doesn't have the Honda badge on it. But I got two of these. The kit was like 70, 80 bucks and I installed it myself. I did all the wiring and stuff on my own, so I didn't think it was that hard. But I installed it myself. It has push to start, walk away, auto lock, walk away, and walk up to unlock. Uh, remote start could roll the windows down pop the trunk and there is also a little key that I think you guys saw that earlier But there is a little key that you can cut and then you can get in there But I've loved the system so far. I've had it in my car for about a year and a half ever since I got it I just put it on because I thought it was cool and uh, Yeah so as we get on inside I keep my car as clean as possible. I cleaned it yesterday but you know it's a daily it's my daily driver it's my only car so it's still a little bit dirty around the foot walls and stuff but looking at the door panel it's all soft touch material which is nice it's a two-tone tan and brown interior actually i almost forgot to tell you the exterior is called Te tefeta white and it's kind of it's a discontinued color for the accord which i'm kind of disappointed about because can't really go into advanced auto and buy Tofeta white cans without having them to order them or say they just can't at all. Like I said, the brown on the top is soft touch. You also have a soft touch armrest and leather on the door panel and some stitching over here. I'm not, I don't really think it's real stitching, but it does look nice and it feels pretty nice too. The driver's window is auto up and down, but not the passenger and rear ones. There's your door locks window locks and the mirror controls and this car has heated mirrors as well which are pretty useful for when it rains or when it's really cold outside and the mirrors fog up but you have some storage over here and a bottle holder down there now looking at the driver's seat it's an eight-way power driver's seat and you have a four-way power passenger seat and the driver's seat is actually really really comfortable i don't have any complaints about it i do wish it had some more support on the sides and maybe a little bit on my hips but other than that they're really good for taking corners and just long drives and a bunch of stuff you do have manual lumbar just forward and backwards not up and down it's on the side i'll show you guys that in a second but i've tried to keep the leather in good condition but you know it's kind of hard but I think I will. I'm going to definitely fix this seat up. The passenger seat and the rear seats look a lot better than the driver's seat. That's just how it looked when I got it. I've tried to take care of it, but that's what happens. There's the fuel release. You just push that, and then for the trunk release, you just pull it. Now, getting inside, you have a four-spoke leather wrap wheel. It's a pretty nice feeling wheel. I like how the leather feels. It's pretty sticky in a good way. Like you can, it's pretty grippy if I should say that better. And you have some little bolsters on the wheel there. And I like the steering controls and I like the layout. It's the same steering wheel as you'd see on the third gen Odyssey. So from 05 to 09. And I still like the wheel, it's just different colors. But you do have your volume and audio controls on the left with voice control and the back button. But I do have another radio on it so the voice control button is a mute button and the back button is still the back button. And over here you have your cruise control settings so you can turn it on with that, set, resume, and cancel. There's no adaptive cruise control or anything crazy like that and I wouldn't want it. The Inspire did have it though and pre-collision braking the same as the Acura RL. Now over here you have your sunroof controls which Hondas are pretty weird with doing that. So the sunroof controls over there. There's the traction control. This is a little light for my security system when it's armed. And looking at the light controls, they aren't automatic, which I I could I'm fine without them, but it would be nice to have them. But the light controls are there and I said they're full LED all around front and rear and the wiper controls over here. And they are semi-automatic, so that's pretty nice to have. I don't know if all of all of sevens and accords have it, but it's nice to have. So like I said, I have push button start in my car, so you just have to put your foot on the brake and press the start button to go.
So looking at the gauges, they're pretty simple, of course, for 2007, but I really like how they look. On the left, you have your tachometer. Right there is your shift indicator. In the center, you have a big speedometer, which goes up to 160. And you have a little information display there, which you use this button to scroll through it. You just keep clicking it. And on the right of that, you have your fuel gauge and your coolant temperature gauge over there. Now, looking at the center display, my car did come with a factory navigation system, but I did replace that and I swapped it in for this 7-inch JVC KW740BT. And obviously it has Apple CarPlay and Bluetooth and all that kind of stuff. And you can have custom settings and just a bunch of stuff in there. I also have a backup camera, so when you put it in reverse, you have a backup camera there with guidance lines, but they don't steer with the wheel or anything, which I'm fine with that. I could do without it. I also painted all of this black so it matched. This is the original color. It's like a gray, but I painted this whole console black. There's the start button right there, and I covered up the keyhole with a little piece of plastic that I made. The hazards are right there. And for the climate control, you still have dual zone climate control just like from the factory i believe ex models and above had the dual zone or maybe even exls only but it's pretty nice this is the pac head unit well the pac cluster so it's a lot nicer looking than the metric kit than i saw on on websites for sale this was definitely a lot more expensive than the metric kit but i definitely think it was worth it and with my head unit, I have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is really nice because this radio has its own navigation system, but Waze and Apple Maps is just a lot better than all of that. And it's just nice to have Waze in your car too. This head unit also has its own Waze integration, but it's really laggy and you have to go through the JVC app to use it. So I used to use it, but I just skip it now. Right here is the control for my electronic cutout, so it's just a little wireless remote. If I need to change the battery, I'll just pull it out and then swap it. But on opens the valve and off closes it. It's also like a sport mode button because the car is definitely a lot more lively with the exhaust open, so I guess that's like a sport mode. And I just mostly leave it open anyways, and I still get decent gas mileage. Now down here, on stock accords it's like a wood piece that opens and closes but there was still always a center console thing in the middle there now down here you just have a little thing i put flash drives and stuff they say not an ashtray obviously i guess and then over here you'd have a power outlet but i rewired it and put in a 3.1 amp usb port well actually two of them which is nice and down here you have heated seats it's two stage for the driver and the passenger, but not the rear seats, obviously. And you have a five speed automatic transmission with first, second, and third gear. And like I said, you have a backup camera, but you don't have guidance lines because I guess that would have been too hard to do. But it's a pretty good transmission. These transmissions are known to go out on the V6 Accords, but I haven't really had any trouble with mine. And it's the original transmission. I have a, I have 120,000 miles on my car. I got it with about 106, I think, somewhere around that. But, and that's only been a year. I don't know if that's a lot, or I don't know if that's a little bit. But whatever. Now looking at the glove box, seventh gen Accords are known to have finicky glove box openings. So with mine, I kind of have to push it up in a certain way and then it can open. I guess it's a, a nice little security thing. I usually leave napkins and straws in there and stuff like that, so nothing crazy. I have two cup holders here, which every Accord comes with those, but I painted them so it has a silver in the middle and a black on the outside. Now looking at the center console, it's a two-tier setup, so Every time I use it, it reminds me of regular car reviews. Oh, you like this trick? Well, Jerry at the office loves this one. Watch, oh, you got one thing, or you got another thing, or you got one thing, or you got another thing, or you got one thing, or you got another thing, or you got one thing, or you got another thing. 
and I just think it's pretty funny. But you do have one thing over here, so uh, my wallet and just stuff like that. And then you have another thing which is deeper in there, and you have a 12 volt power outlet which I just put a splitter in there, and then I put a USB port in the back of the car. But that's pretty much it for the front, except at the mirror I have you have a standard manually dimming mirror. There's this the microphone for my Bluetooth and for the phone. I am planning on putting in an auto dimming review mirror. I just have to figure out how to get the button off. And I do have LEDs all throughout the car, so the map lights are LED, the rears are LED, even the heated seat buttons and the sunroof buttons are LED. Everything's LED in my car now. You have three garage door home link, which it's nice to have that. And then you have a sunglass compartment over here. And visors with lights and mirrors and they do pass the visor test so if Jacob and Yuri if you guys ever film a 7th gen Accord there you go so getting in the rear seat the door panel is pretty much the same as the front seats so that's one thing that I like about this car so you have soft touch material up top here and you still have a soft touch armrest and the same material on the side with stitching over there I forgot to mention the whole dash is soft touch so you know it's mid 2000s Honda they did a pretty good job and you have a bunch of wood trim everywhere like around the shifter and around the door and window controls and you have a cup holder and some storage over there I just leave my umbrella there but the rear seats are actually pretty comfortable I have maybe mm, two or three inches of legroom so that's actually pretty nice um, and headroom is actually pretty good too for the front and the rear. I don't know if you can still hear me, but I have about maybe two inches of headroom and I'm 5'8", so that's not too bad for a mid-sized car. And you have map pockets on both sides over there. I put a USB board in there, it kind of looks ghetto, but I'm gonna redo it and make it look cleaner. I also put WeatherTech mats in here, but they're not real WeatherTech. It's a Chinese company on eBay that sent me these and I have no complaints on them. They work really well. I did have to screw them in, which is kind of funny, but I don't really care. It's my car and I'm gonna keep it for a while. Now in the center, you do have an armrest with two cup holders. One is bigger than the other. I see a lot of cars doing that. And then you have a little pass through here and the rear seats do fold, but it's just the whole back seat. So it's not 60, 40 and I wish it was 60-40 because I actually do use the trunk space and the back seat pretty frequently so it would be nice to have. Another problem I have with this car is that the only way to fold the rear seats down is through this little keyhole right there so you have to put the key in there and then twist it and then pull the seats down. There's no latch in the trunk that I can find. I've been looking for it for about a year and I still haven't found anything but oh well. Now to get in the trunk you can either in my case, press and hold the trunk button on my key fob or pull the little trunk release over here and it does pretty much the same thing. But getting into the trunk, it's a pretty decently sized trunk. I usually leave some cleaning supplies, my front plate and a sun visor just as my necessities. I also ghetto rigged this trunk net, which is, it's pretty useful and um, the trunk space is actually pretty usable too. Now like I said there's nowhere where you can actually find somewhere to pull the seats down but like what I was saying there's a spring here somewhere that can keep the trunk up and uh, it won't let it fall on people but right here is where the factory DVD unit would go. I sold both of those but yeah the trunk space is actually pretty usable i don't use the trunk that much i just wish that the seats folded down 60 40 split or something different there's my backup camera over there but yeah so under the hood of the accord you have a three liter naturally aspirated single overhead cam v6 it's also known as the j30 a5 and all accord v6s have this engine the JDM ones, so the Inspires had VCM, I'm pretty sure. And you could also get a hybrid with this powertrain too. So it was a three liter V6 with a hybrid power plant. So it was actually a pretty interesting car. 
I don't think it was a hybrid for fuel efficiency, but it was more a hybrid for performance. So I kind of wish I had that car, but I'm more than happy with what this engine provides. And I've done a little things to it. So I make, so stock, it makes 244 horsepower and 212 pound-feet of torque. And now I've, got, I've gotten it to make 255 horsepower and 224 pound-feet of torque. So a little bit of, a, there's a pretty substantial difference compared to stock. And now I've just done intake exhaust and a slight tune which it's not tuned to all the way. Uh, it's a Honda tune, or it's either Honda or a K tuner. I got it from someone that doesn't need theirs anymore, and uh, it's been pretty fine for me. Uh, the car feels really, really peppy. It feels like a lot more than 250, but it's still fine. It's not a drag racer. It's still an Accord, but I like what it does. I believe you should be expecting around 21 to 23 miles per gallon combined from the factory, at least back in 2007. I'm getting about 19, 20, 21 miles per gallon on different gas tanks, but I do have a heavy foot, so that might be a factor on... I usually go through gas pretty frequently, and I drive a lot in a short amount of time, so kind of hurts in both ways but I'm fine with it just hear how it sounds again from outside and maybe a few pulls or whatever let's just find out video right now that you're watching and uh, I just realized how long the video already is so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make it a two-part video so consider this the uh, the first part you know like the in-depth tour and then the second part will be the whole driving thing and everything like that normally my videos won't be this long if you're still here thumbs up for you but uh, normally my videos shouldn't be that long, but it's just, it's my car and I had a lot to talk about, I guess. But uh, yeah, see you in the next one.